precision medicine is something which is relatively new, although we've been practicing it in some form or the other without calling it precision medicine. But today, a precision medicine initiative has been started by the American Diabetes Association and the European Association of Study of Diabetes, and I'm very happy to represent India on this panel. What we're trying to do is to, first of all, classify diabetes into different types, type 1, type 2, uh, monogenic diabetes, gestational diabetes, and other types, and so on. And in each of these, define precision diagnosis, precision monitoring, precision prevention, precision treatment, precision prognosis, etc. So the whole idea is that diabetes is such a complex disease, there's no one size fits all. You cannot say everybody takes metformin, then everybody takes something else. We shouldn't treat it like a lottery ticket being taken, whichever you get, you get that. It's not like that. Depending on your phenotype, depending on your type of diabetes, we have to decide what treatment you have to give. Of course, precision diabetes is in its infancy, but I'm happy to tell you that it has already come to the diabetic clinic particularly in the monogenic forms of diabetes. For example, maturity onset diabetes of the young or MODI, neonatal diabetes, which is onset of diabetes below six months of age in neonates, newborn babies. In these forms of diabetes, I think it's mandatory to do the genetic testing. Because if you do the genetic testing, you can find out which subtype of MODI they have, which subtype of neonatal diabetes they have, and very often, people who are wrongly treated with insulin can stop their insulin and be treated with tablets. This is life-changing, not only for the patient and the family, but for the society as a whole. So I think precision medicine is uh, slowly being adopted into the diabetic clinic. We are also developing different software, for example, a software called Diana. This will help to subclassify the type 2 diabetes in different types, and the software will also tell you uh, which treatment is good, what is the prognosis, what is the risk of developing retinopathy, nephropathy in the next five years. All this is unheard of even a couple of years ago. So I think precision medicine is uh, rapidly marching forward and I'm very happy that we have a department of precision medicine at our uh, center and we are very happy to take the lead in this field in this country. Thank you very much. The limitations of precision medicine are Partly it's cost, because for example, to diagnose uh, MODI or other monogenic forms of diabetes like neonatal diabetes and so on, you need to do testing. Now the question is, these tests are not, uh, they're not free certainly, and in some cases it may not be even cheap, although it's getting cheaper uh, year by year. And we are also trying to reduce the cost. For example, compared to US or other countries, it will be a fraction of the cost in India. But even so, some people cannot afford it. So what is the solution? We have been trying through various uh, charitable uh, institutions and other uh, mechanisms and the support of the Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, to do it free of cost wherever possible. So we get, we are a nodal center uh, at Chennai, the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation is a nodal center for precision diabetes and monogenic diabetes in the whole country. So we get samples from all over the country. First thing, we don't ask them how much can you pay or can you pay. We first get the sample, do it. Those who can afford to pay, okay, we accept it. Otherwise, we do it free of cost more as a service because we think that precision medicine should not be limited just because of the cost. The other thing about precision medicine is that sometimes the science will tell you that a particular drug is the best, but the patient may not want it. The patient will say, I don't want it. Suppose the science tells you that insulin is the best for this particular patient in a type 2, but the patient swears by, you know, and says that I will never take insulin. So what do you do? So that is a variation of precision medicine called as personalized medicine. We also have to take the patient's uh, context, social context, preferences, affordability into consideration. And then precision medicine gets slightly modified to make it personalized medicine. We are doing both. And I think the field is now taking off. And in the years to come, you will find more and more of precision medicine and personalized medicine being practiced in the field of diabetes in India. Uh, phenarenone being a new molecule is expensive, uh, but then if it can slow down, let us say, reaching the end stage and reaching dialysis and transplantation, as we know, those are horribly expensive and nobody can afford it. So therefore, by using a drug like phenarenone, if you can postpone that by a few years, I think that's a very cost-effective way of treating. The other thing is that as uh, more companies develop this and uh, uh, I'm sure that the cost will come down, uh, making it more affordable. All new drugs when they come in, they are more expensive. But as the generic versions keep coming in, 
then the costs crash and then it becomes more affordable uh, to the common man. Thank you.